Dumbledore said that only a true Gryffindor would be able to draw it out. Dobie's reward Lucius Malfoy, you've lost me my servant, boy. Dobie, you shall not harm Harry Potter. Dobie defends Harry after the latter frees him from servitude. Lucius Malfoy barged into Dumbledore's office. Outraged that Dumbledore had returned to the school after being dismissed. Dumbledore calmly responded that the governors had asked him to return once they heard that Arthur Weasley's daughter was attacked. Apparently they had been blackmailed by Lucius to vote for Dumbledore's dismissal in the first place on pain of Lucius cursing their families. Doby followed Lucius into the room, thus showing that his masters were the Malfoys. Doby free Doby is freed by Harry Potter. Dumbledore and Malfoy had a calm and venomous interchange, respectively. During which Dumbledore and Harry, with the help of Dobie's unspoken hints, essentially exposed Lucius sneaking Riddle's diary, one of his illegal artifacts, into Ginny's school things during the fight with Arthur at Flourish and Blots. This was supposed to frame Ginny for the attacks. With heavy implications on the Muggle Protection Act Arthur Weasley had been suggesting. Malfoy dared Dumbledore to prove his accusation, and while the headmaster has insufficient evidence to do that, he cautioned Malfoy against orchestrating further such plots. Knowing that a master could release his housey elf by giving them some clothes, Harry tricked Malfoy into freeing Dobie by giving Malfoy one of his own socks, which he promptly threw away. And was caught by Dobie. Malfoy, after discovering Harry's trick, attempted to kill Harry, only to be stopped by Dobie. Dobie thanked Harry dearly for freeing him and left. At the ending feast, Dumbledore announced his school treat of cancelling all final exams, much to Hermione's dismay, and that Lockhart would not return to Hogwarts. Third year he was their friend and he betrayed them. He was their friend. I hope he finds me, because when he does, I'm gonna be ready. When he does, I'm gonna kill him. Harry believing Sirius Black to be the man who betrayed his parents. The smallest bedroom Harry in his bedroom reading a Daily Prophet article. Harry's third year in 1993 started out almost as bad as the year prior, and gradually got depressing. Throughout the preceding summer, the Dursleys became fearful of his magical abilities getting exposed that they banned him from talking to the neighbors immediately after his return home to them. They even went as far as punishing him for giving their phone number to his friends, as evident to Harry getting reprimanded by Uncle Vernon when the latter received a call from Ron. This, however, did not stop Harry from studying magic every night by sneaking his school supplies and hiding them in his room one night while Aunt Petunia and Dudley were out admiring Vernon's new company car. 
Furthermore, he had little contact with his friends nor any news from the wizarding world since the phone incident. But Hedwig was allowed out of her padlock cage because the Dursleys could no longer take the noise she made in boredom. On the 31st of July, Harry's 13th birthday, which might have made the Dursleys forget about his birthday, for they were too busy preparing for a visit from Aunt Marge. The sight of a copy of the Daily Prophet among the male femeral interested Harry. As it said that Ron had returned from a trip to Egypt to visit his oldest brother Bill Weasley, a cursebreaker of Gringotts, for which Arthur Weasley paid using 700 galleons he won in the Daily Prophet Grand Prize Galleon Draw. The article also showcased a picture of the Weasleys standing in front of a pyramid. It was there that Ron bought Harry the most fascinating present, a sneakoscope, which was sold for tourists. He also revived birthday presents from Hermione and Hagrid as well. Marge starts to inflate a enraged Harry inflates Marge Dursley. When his Hogsmeade permission form was delivered, Harry was worried of the trouble he'll probably go through in order to persuade his aunt or uncle to sign it. They agreed to do so the next morning, but only if he behaved during Marge's visit. However, Marge began insulting the memory of Harry's mother at the dinner table three days later. Describing her as a bad egg who ran off with a scoundrel and left the Dursleys with Harry as the result in front of them. Harry lost his temper to this, inadvertently making Marge's wine glass explode. The insults transitioned to his father on the final day of her visit, making him very upset to such extent that he ended up losing all control of his magic powers and accidentally inflated her. Possibly with an engorgement charm. Vernon ordered his nephew to put Marge back the way she was. But Harry sighed no and instead packed up his school things and left the house. He fled out of fear of being expelled from Hogwarts by the Ministry of Magic, for using underage magic outside school, something he had already been warned about. Later that night, Harry was picked up off the curb of Magnolia Crescent by the Tripleticker Wizard Transport the Night Bus. Which was sent to drive him as two members of the Ministry's Accidental Magic Reversal Squad were dispatched to deflate and obliviate Marge. During the ride to the Leaky Cauldron, The bus conductor Stan Shunpike gave him a copy of the Daily Prophet with its front page story being about the Ministry's continuing struggle to recapture Sirius Black. A convicted Voldemort supporter who recently escaped from the wizard prison as Caban, the first person ever to have done so after spending 12 years there for the mass murder of 13 people. With a single blasting curse. Harry Potter 4 Movie Screen Caps Doc COM1579. Minister Cornelius Fudge personally sees that Harry is safe. 